going to be a big ass print. Certainly the biggest I've ever printed this image, the Joshua Trees and Fog, which I've covered in previous videos, ad nauseum. Um, but we're printing it real, real big. 40 inches by 50 inches. That's this big. That's 40 inches wide right there. So it's a beast, man. Um, and I'll be honest, I'm nervous because it's from a six by seven negative, uh, not a large format negative, it's medium format. And I would never print an image that large. Even me wouldn't blow up a negative that large, typically. The largest I offer this uh, negative or this uh, image for print on my website is 20 by 25. So we're doubling that. It's like a 20x blow up from the original negative or something. Um, so I'm a little bit nervous, but we're pressing forth. Um, now I have a resolution proof here, which is an eight by 10 snippet of the full size image so that I can analyze sharpness and uh, grain. And uh, as I always say, you know, you got to view this from a realistic viewing distance. Don't pull out your loop and start analyzing the grain because it's going to be very disappointing. Um, you know, from this distance, yeah, it's disappointing, but um, most people are never going to be analyzing the image that close. So realistic viewing distance, I would say this is probably about as close as most people would get because you can just barely get the whole picture in your peripheral. So from that distance, it's passable. You know, it looks like a massive blow up, but it's passable. Um, I know I've done a lot of these videos where I make a, a print and frame it up. Um, but one thing I never really address in those other videos is the cost of everything. Um, and it's because I'm normally doing it for a client and I feel like discussing prices and all that kind of stuff would be uncouth, a word that my wife taught me early in our relationship. Um, and I just normally don't want to discuss figures like that. But this is just for my dumb friend. So um, I'm not charging him anything other than cost of the material. So I'll tell you what the cost of everything is. The resolution proof, just to start things off, was $13.50. So $13.50 for a little bit of peace of mind to make sure that uh, I'm happy with the sharpening and the grain and the uh, blow up and all that. Um, I'm going to send this off to my friend to get his approval. So I just want him to know how sharp it's going to look and what the grain's going to look like before he splurges on the full 40 by 50 inch print. Um, now he did a real cool mock-up of the frame. Uh, so we know exactly what we're going to do in terms of dimensions. I'm going to do a, uh, a print floated into a shadow box like I've done many times before with a thin black frame. It's going to be in a square frame, kind of a cool, hip, modern look to it. I've already talked to the framer. I know he can handle it. Um, and we got a quote and we're all ready to go. I'm going to get the go ahead from my friend, hopefully, and then uh, I can have the lab start printing the, uh, the image. We're going to do a pigment print on photo rag paper. And that's what this is made out of. So you want to get it, the proof made out of the same material it's going to be on. And um, then I'm going to get it mounted, sent to the framer. And then my friend who lives in Sacramento, is going to have to drive down with a freaking box truck or uh, an Econoline van or something. It's not going to fit in my car, so I can't even deliver it to him. So uh, he's going to come down and pick it up with me. Um, when I do a print like this, I like to keep a record these days of the exact process I did for resizing the file and sharpening it. And that's because when I get really good results, like the, the print just came out fantastic uh, with the, in terms of sharpness and grain, I want to know what I did. So I keep a, a log book now, basically like a, um, a journal of uh, whenever I get a print made, uh, I note down the size I'm printing it at and what steps I took to prep the file for printing. So on this one, I took the original high-res file, which was scanned at 3,200 pixels per inch, which is pretty damn big, but it ain't big enough for 40 by 50. It's only big enough for about 20 by 25. Um, but I took that original 3,200 uh, PPI file. I applied a smart sharpen at 200% with a 3.0 radius and 20% noise reduction. A um, couple other adjustments as well. I resized it at that point to 40 by 50 at 300 PPI. So that was actually blowing up the image by like 1.7 X. So even the high res scan was not large enough 
I had to blow it up with Photoshop. And uh, I used the uh, Preserve Details option in Resample. I then gave it a second Smart Sharpen of 250% at 4.0 radius with 40% noise reduction. I then went around and cleaned up uh, any specks, dust I saw, and then um, sent off the uh, proof for the lab to print out for me. Um, pretty good results. I think for this big of a blow up, I couldn't have done it really any, any better. So uh, next step, I gotta drop this thing in the mail for my friend. Is barely fit between my wheel wells. So as you can see, the print is rigid, and that's because it's already been mounted. Uh, I actually had Pro Photo Connection do the printing and the mounting. And uh, they actually outsourced the mounting to a local business uh, in Santa Ana called Display Solutions. But um, having Pro Photo handle the whole thing just saves me a trip. So um, I had it mounted on 3 16 inch gator board. And gator board is just like foam core board, like you used to do your science projects on. Um, but it's much more rigid. And a print this size going into a shadow box style frame needs a pretty rigid backing. So uh, gator board was the, uh, the perfect fit. So I haven't seen the print yet. I really hope it's in good shape. Let's open her up. And if my voice sounds a little shredded, it's because it is. And a weekend uh, of off-roading and uh, general insanity with my brothers and my friend who's actually ordering the print. So, uh, left me a little horse. All right, moment of truth. Oh, damn, that is large, looks good, no damage, no defects, no missing ink, no bent corners. Looking good. Thank God. All right. I don't want to talk too much over this because I don't want to spit, spit onto it. But um, in terms of uh, cost, 40 by 50 inch print on photo rag paper is $333.33. Then mounting on gator board was $98.80. So this whole thing, grand total, $432.13. Um, now the framer is not going to have to do the mounting part of it, so that'll save me a little bit on the framing. But uh, the framing, I think, is really going to be the killer in terms of uh, budget here. So um, now I just got to think, keep this thing uh, nicely protected and stored at my house here until I can get it to the framer. And as I've talked about in a previous video, you really want to have a framer you've worked with and you can trust when you're dealing with something this intense. So uh, I'm going to be going to Solomon Art, my, uh, my framer in Fountain Valley. Uh, they just do a phenomenal job and I can really trust them to not scratch this print because there's a lot of surface area for it to scratch and uh, pigment prints on hand and mule photo rag paper are very prone to scratching. So uh, you gotta leave it with someone you can trust. But let's see if we can wrap this thing back up without uh, putting any damage on it. I feel like I can already hear the clickety-clack of righteous keyboards leaving the righteous comments. 
Oh, a mediocre picture printed way too big? I bet it looks real sharp. If you can't make it good, make it big, right? Which, you know, fair enough. Uh, I'm definitely asking too much of my Epson on this one. And um, I'm pushing the resolution of a 6x7 negative uh, much further than I normally would. I've gone well out of my comfort zone. <clears throat> but, you know, fear is for the scared. And um, courage is for the winners. I don't know what the hell that means. I think I saw that on an ad for a CrossFit gym. Um, now, but my, uh, my personal philosophy on all this is... You know, a few things. First off, um, I like to know where the line is on this kind of thing. You know, how big is too big? How much can I push a, a negative to make a big print? And how do you know where the line is until you cross it? So it's good to kind of exceed your comfort zone every now and then. Uh, and now I have this great experience of blowing up a negative super big, where if I have a client come to me in the future wanting a huge print, I'll have some experience to, to pull from. You know, I can tell them. This is what you can expect in terms of sharpness. This is, uh, you know, some things to be aware of, some things I'd recommend, what I wouldn't recommend. Um, and also, too, you know, I've been in real good communication with my client, my client, um, and I've told him, you know, we're pushing the, the resolution hard. It's not going to be super sharp from up close. And I gave him a freaking proof. And uh, he saw the proof and he said, yeah, let's go ahead. So who am I to say, nah, we're not doing it because of some stupid point of, you know, artistic pride on my point, on my part. So, uh, you know, why let a little thing like sharpness get in the way of doing something rad? If you had the opportunity to print 40 by 50 inches without spending a dime of your own money, wouldn't you do it? A scant 12 days later, this monster was ready for us. So my friend flew into town and rented a full-size pickup to make the drive home. And yeah, I, I know, a, a box truck or a van probably would have been easier, but this is what we had. So after plenty of looking and measuring and thinking, we threw together a support frame made out of two by fours. The goal was to strap the piece to this frame, then strap the frame to the truck. It should provide plenty of support for the 450 mile drive home. Plenty, I think. The next morning, it was off to the framer to pick her up, and we were lucky enough to catch a glimpse of the full piece before they wrapped it in cardboard. Sure, we only got to see it through bubble wrap, but it looked effing awesome. Big, bold, and beautiful, baby. Now, I don't know whose jaw fell on the floor first, my clients when he saw the finished piece, or my framers when he saw how we were planning to transport it. I could tell he was searching for a tactful way of saying, this is a terrible idea, you guys are morons. The biggest thing he was worried about was moisture, because my friend was going to hit some rain. And if there's one thing framed artwork hates, it's water. So we bolted over to Home Depot and grabbed two queen-size mattress bags so we could double bag it before wrapping it in a tarp. That set us back $18.53, but we ain't going to count that towards the running total. So bubble wrap, plus cardboard, plus two mattress bags, plus a tarp. I'm sure it'll be fine. We secured the artwork to the frame with a bunch of that stretch wrap stuff and some packing tape, loaded her up, tipped her back ever so carefully. Then I had to go John McClain on its ass to get the ratchet strap in the right spot. We draped the tarp over it, tucked her in nice and tight, then went to close the tailgate. But the pucker factor was just a bit too much for me. The tailgate was putting some nerve-wracking pressure against the artwork. We only needed another inch or so of breathing room to feel comfortable, but it just wasn't there and I could just picture a stress fracture spidering through the frame over each little bump on the highway. So we removed the tailgate, stored it in the back seat, then added another strap to keep it from sliding out. After a test drive on the freeway made us feel thoroughly underprepared for the long journey, it was back to my house to burn through two or three more rolls of tape to make the tarp more secure and less flappy in the wind. And then, in a stroke of absolute genius, I had the bright idea of removing the protective bed liner from the tailgate to see if that would yield us the breathing room we needed to close it properly. It worked like a charm. And in the words of the great Jeremy Clarkson, sometimes my genius, it's almost frightening.
So with the peace secure and protected from the elements, better than a mouse in a bomb shelter, I could finally bid adieu to my friend, as I brimmed with confidence that the peace would arrive unscathed. But I was wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe we'll go that route then. I'll probably, probably recommend that. I, I think uh, taking it apart and stuff, I just worry about something else yeah. happening. <laughs> cool. All right. Thanks, guy. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate it. All right. Take care. Yep. All right. Bye. Oh. Should have done a box truck. Wasn't any major catastrophic failure or anything like that. And my friend actually did end up driving through a pretty hefty uh, rainstorm. Good news is, piece didn't get wet, frame didn't break, plexiglass is fine, the artwork's fine. Bad news is, um, within the frame, along the edge of the frame, there's these thin matte pieces to complete the shadow box. And the top one came loose. So it's actually hanging down and touching the artwork. Uh, now I just got off the phone with my framer there to see what he would recommend on, on doing that, to see if my, my friend could fix it himself. And um, I think long story short is it wouldn't be a good idea for him to try and handle it himself. So he's gonna have to find a framer up there who can maybe come pick it up or come fix it on location uh, at his house and uh, get that piece back where it's supposed to. And uh, my framer suspects, and this is what he was worried about, he suspects the temperature changes, the moisture in the air, all that stuff was making the materials in the frame uh, shrink and, can, and expand or whatever, and that just loosens the glue and loosens the, the different parts of it to where that, um, that came loose. So, you know, could have been worse, I guess. Um, really wondering why I didn't just ship him the print and then have it framed up there. <sighs> now when I said my friend was gonna hit some rain, I certainly wasn't expecting this. It was a goddamn deluge. Oh, and by the way, the framing portion of this set us back $950. So this was just a cool $1,395.63 flying 75 miles an hour through the book of Genesis. NBD, man. And actually, considering how much effing rain fell on this thing, I'm kind of impressed it didn't get a drop on it. Our mattress bags and tarp worked, evidently. So, you know, that's a win. My friend thinks the damage was caused by the temperature change more than the moisture. After all, frigid wind was blasting the edge of the artwork sticking up past the truck bed for over six hours. I guess we should have wrapped it in a blanket, too. So my friend had to bring it into a framer up near him that could repair the damage. And this time he rented a van. Because listen, he and I are nothing if not quick learners. Now we know. It's not a good idea to transport big-ass wall art in an exposed truck bed. And you can see the damage I was talking about here. All in all, the thing was in pretty damn good shape. It was just that one little piece of border along the top that came loose. Getting that fixed cost $300. But uh, I'm just going to mark that down as an idiot tax and not factor it into the running total. Because it was definitely avoidable. So I gotta say, I think this actually could have gone a whole lot worse. Which is just another way of saying we didn't F up that badly. The artwork is now safe and sound on its new wall right at the entrance of their home ready to punch people in the face as they walk through the front door. Because, come on, the point of a massive print like this is to punch viewers in the face. Hmm. You know, I started this video eight months ago. It's been six months since my friend came and picked up the artwork. It's been so freaking long, I'm in a completely different office now. Um, and I was thinking of ending the video right there because, you know, after all, I made a piece, I showed you the different steps, I uh, went through some trials and tribulations, but um, now it's hanging on the wall safe and sound, so end of story. But for some reason it just doesn't feel complete to me. 
After all, I haven't uh, actually laid eyes on the finished piece except for through some bubble wrap. I really would like to see this thing in person. And so uh, I guess I'm going to be flying up to see my friend. I knew Southwest Airlines hadn't seen the last of old Nikki C. I think this is where most YouTubers would cut to a B-roll montage of them going through airport security and boarding a plane and landing at their destination all over a bed of uh, lo-fi hip-hop beats. But, um, that's not really my style. What's up, dude? Uh -huh. <laughs> Holy shit. Freaking huge, man. Yeah. I kind of wish I had signed it and numbered it. I kind of wish you did. <laughs> There's nowhere to do it. You can't sign on the print. Can you do like white uh, ink or something like that? Well, I've tried that, but it like scrapes the, the ink off the print. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I would risk scratching the whole thing and like having to redo the print after it was mounted and everything. Like I just wasn't willing to to risk it. I didn't even get you a certificate of authenticity. I figured you wouldn't want to find a place to store it. So I mean <laughs> it's edition six of twenty five. Six uh, of twenty five. Okay. Six of twenty five, yeah. But I know I tried to figure out a place to number it, but without doing a border around it, there's like nowhere to sign and, and number it. I love the walk in and seeing that. Is the light going on right now? Yeah, dude, it's it's great. I'm so glad you put a spotlight on it. It's it's awesome. I uh, on the flight over, I came up with like, I came up with a bunch of that's what she said jokes. Yeah. I got like a baker's dozen of these, so settle in. It's so much bigger than I remember. I can't believe it fits. I did some big ones in college, but nothing like this. These will get better. If I knew it was going to be this big, I never would agree to this. Some people watching this are going to be so disgusted with me for doing something so big. Others are going to admire my moxie. How long did it take your wife to get used to it? I know you paid for it, but this definitely hurt me more than it hurt you. I didn't even charge you full price because I just wanted to know what it would be like working with something so huge. I should have known the way we did it was going to break something. And it kind of works. I think you're right about it shrinking in the cold air on the way up here. You don't let your kids get too close to it, do you? Now that it's over, I don't know, I feel kind of emotionally empty. I can't believe I did this with my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I need a drink. If you got something beneficial out of this video and want to buy me a beer to say thanks, check the link in the description.